the interesting parts about building an Android application is all the awesome configurations of screen sizes and form factors. And if you're a developer who prides themselves on being available on the most devices possible, then chances are you've got a lot of your images and icons at each specific resolution that you need to support. But be warned, this might be causing a large issue with the size of your APKs. My name is Colt McCandless, and if you're trying to squeeze the last byte out of your APK file size, then vector drawables are a handy solution. Uh, see, one of the big problems with images that you include in your APK is that you end up needing to have multiple versions at this, of the same image at various resolutions. And that's because file types like PNG and JPEG are what we call raster graphics. Uh, they define a 2D grid of pixel data that's pretty much copy pasted to the screen when it's drawn. So to get different resolutions, you have to create an entirely new file file at that resolution and place it in your APK. The result is that the more images you have to include, the larger your APK size is. This is where vector drawables come in. Rather than having to store an image for each resolution you support, vector drawables allow you to use one file and generate whatever resolution you need on demand. Uh, it works like this. A vector drawable file creates a bunch of shapes and their visual properties, like a type, uh, the position, the color, the rotation, et etc. et cetera. When you load a vector drawable file, the system draws each shape to the screen, giving you your final image. And since it's just drawing shapes, you can do this at any size you'd like, meaning a single VD file inside of your APK can let you generate uh, MDPI, HDPI, and XXX HDPI images, greatly reducing your APK bloat. Oh, uh, by the way, another cool thing. You can define animations on vector drawables, which means instead of keeping each frame of your animation logged out at each resolution you support, you can simply set up an XML file that transforms the graphic in the same way, giving a similar visual result with much less resource overhead. Now, it's worth pointing out while vector drawables can save you some size, there's a few caveats you need to consider when using them. Firstly, Loading vector drawables in your app at runtime isn't the same as loading a JPEG. Uh, while JPEGs have hardware decoders to help unpack things, vector drawables need to be generated through successive draw commands to the GPU. Uh, see, every shape in a VD file has to be rendered to a texture before the final image can be used on screen. This means that the bigger the image that you have and you're generating, or the more complex the drawable is, the more time it's going to take to load your image. But uh, just like JPEGs or PNGs, you only pay that cost at runtime. Uh, rendering a VD later is just as cheap as any other graphics resource. Secondly, in order for vector drawables to represent complex images, you have to add a lot of complex shapes. Uh, this impacts both the size of the vector drawable file and the amount of time it takes to load the image at runtime. As such, it makes sense that vector drawables are best used for images with low amounts of details that are trivially simple to represent with shape elements. While PNGs and JPEGs might be able to compress those images quite well, the more simple the image, the more savings that VDs will give you. Finally, make sure that you keep an eye on the complexity of the paths in the file. Uh, see, most of the time when you're creating shape information from an external tool, it can go the extra mile to insert lots of additional points or path information, which may not be required in order to produce the desired visual output. By simplifying your path data before adding the vector drawable to your app, you'll reduce the amount of file size these items take up in your final APK. And that's kind of the trick with performance, right? I mean, catching all the crazy stuff before it gets out of hand, which is why you should check out the rest of the Android Performance Patterns videos. And don't forget to join our Google Plus community to ask questions to the other experts. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters. Thank you.